So as we've already spoken about, uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been observing and managing and, and living on this land sustainably um, for tens of thousands of years. Um, and at the same time, they've been sharing stories and, and dances and ceremonies around this and their understanding of the cosmos. Absolutely. So what we're talking about here are oral communities. That is communities that transfer information through the spoken language as we're doing here today. So each song, dance, story can be absolutely packed uh, with observations and different information. Now, all of this information is woven together by law, um, handed down by, of course, the ancestors. Uh, now, knowledge on how to perform these dances, how to sing these songs, how to share these stories, uh, that's also really vital information as well. Um, and that too is handed down from the ancestors, but only to people who, um, within the community, who are known to be able to take on that responsibility, to be able to share those dances, share those stories and songs um, accurately to the future generations. So these knowledges of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples then are embedded in what we call uh, either the dreaming or in things we call song lines. Yeah, so they're modern terms that we use to describe these things. And here we have a schematic representation of what song lines are, um, or dreaming tracks. Now, the parallel lines, they are the tracks uh, that help people navigate, say, from one country to another person's country. Uh, and the dots in the middle, the circles, they are the the uh, sites of significance, as we have kind of learned about previously, um, these are significant sites for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Yeah, so these dreaming stories, they describe law and culture and creation of everything around us. Um, while the song lines are then specific to the tracks that people follow when they're moving between these countries. Um, so different stories and song lines embed knowledge into the land and the sky um, and where the land and what we see around us actually acts as sort of like a mnemonic, a way of memorising this important information. So song lines and dreamings can convey really essential information about living off the land, living with each other within a community uh, and also how to care for country. Now transmitting knowledge orally through the spoken word requires a really impeccable memory um, or memory cues if you don't have that great of a memory um, as communities really are dependent on this information for their survival. Now to improve a story's memorability uh, efficiency and also its longevity uh, it's constructed it's, sorry, it's constructed uh, and layered to convey different types of information. Now, these layers can include all of these things, uh, Aboriginal customary law, um, laws, L-O-R-E and L-A-W-S. So there's two types of laws going on there. Um, it could describe a person's rights and responsibilities uh, within that community and to that community. Uh, and it can also describe the natural processes of that land, of course. Now, most stories are not just stories, right? They are vehicles for information, just like a book is. Um, and these vehicles, they carry the knowledge. Now, contrary to um, dreaming stories being considered as myths uh, in the past, and really up until very recently, uh, these stories are actually really not for entertainment value. Uh, they're for learning and conveying information. Now, dreaming stories are very multifaceted tools. They have many practical applications uh, and societal applications as well that can comprise all of these different things in one small package. Yeah, and, and as a result, these um, stories can be quite deep and, and quite multi-layered. And as such, storytellers and, and knowledge holders will quite often manipulate those stories to only reveal 
the the sort of the parts of the story, the the essential information that the listener is required to to sort of have. Um, and so all the stories that we're sort of going to talk about in this will will be the sort of the first few layers of those stories, the the general um, sort of stories that that anyone in the public is sort of able to know. Um, sort of regardless of your status within the community, yeah. So multi-layered stories can link seemingly unrelated uh, events or processes and link them together like a web of things connected and related. And this is of course all unraveled through story, song, song um, dance and you know different modes of art and land manipulation as well now this type of relational information um, or knowledge this is otherwise called holistical knowledge systems or holistic knowledge um, now this is really great because it values the relational information, how something relates to something else. Uh, and this is a really great way, an efficient way of transmitting really large volumes of information. Now take this map for example. If I was to communicate uh, pieces of information from only one of these categories at any given time. Uh, so if I was to communicate something about cosmology to you, but I could only communicate uh, that cosmology fact to you, nothing else. Then if I wanted to relate all the facts about cosmology that I knew, it could take quite a long time. And then of course, um, even more time to get through the other categories that we have to explore here. For an oral story, it can very easily combine information from all of these categories um, and each of these areas, allowing it to transmit a lot more information in the same amount of time. 